my name is Wesley Uyutin, and um, so some of my class is still here. Uh, my class is uh, Nikkei in the U.S. Uh, it's a Japanese American history class. Uh, so earlier we had Dr. Uh, Franklin Odo talk about, uh, well, he will give more of an explanation, but these songs that were sung by Issei, uh, Japanese immigrants in Hawaii as they were on the uh, sugar plantations. Um, but I don't want to talk too much. I, um, before I hand off the mic to uh, Dr. Odo, I just want to say a few things about him. He was my mentor at the University of Hawaii. He taught me how to dress. <laughs> aloha shirt. Uh, so this uh, Professor Dan Gonzalez did a nice aloha shirt. But I was uh, growing up in Hawaii as a third generation uh, Japanese or Okinawan American immigrant, uh, not knowing much about my history. Uh, and I was looking for a major, like a lot of you was like, what, what should I, how many colleges, what am I going to do? You know? I was a biology major. Uh, but then I met uh, Dr. Odo, and then, uh, uh, so he, as I mentioned to my class, he taught me to look at the broader historical and geographical context of my own self and my history, uh, and to look at things critically. Uh, uh, Dr. Odo uh, taught at the University of Hawaii, then he left us, and he went to uh, the Smithsonian Institution. As the, uh, he was the founding director of the Asian Pacific American Program. Um, and he recently just uh, completed a book on these work songs, the Hole Hole Bushi, which you'll uh, talk about today. But I also want to um, tell you, mention that uh, Dr. Odo was very instrumental in the uh, Asian the movement to get ethnic studies and Asian American studies. Uh, so that uh, the energy that started from here uh, it came to me through uh, largely to doc Dr. Odo at the University of Hawaii. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Franklin Odo. Thank you. I don't, I don't know whether I want to take uh, assume responsibility for particularly his dress, but uh, <laughs> for, for anything else. Uh, Anyway, it's a delight uh, to be here. Uh, those of you who came in a little bit later, um, I, I, I did the, the compositions, the singing by the group, I really, um, is, for me, is really touching because, as I mentioned before, um, this is a genre that was widely assumed, universally assumed, would disappear with the death of the, the last immigrants who, um, Japanese immigrants in, in Hawaii who had sung these songs, actually, on the plantations. They were um, spontaneously created. They're folk songs, so there are no authors. Uh, there's, no, there's no composers. Um, we had, we had uh, some of the lyrics, but we didn't know any of, any of the, we didn't know what the music sounded like. So now you have something of the music because of, um, and I'll show you a DVD a sampler from a, a I apologize to the folks who were here before um, for uh, have, have making you watch this again. But I think it's just as well because uh, Professor Uyuntet says um, there will be a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> so if you weren't paying attention the first time, um, you will be well advised to pay attention now. But before we do that, I wanted to just give you the lyrics for some of the songs that were sung uh, by the group here. Um, to give you a sense of what the topics were, uh, the, the uh, uh, Japanese immigrants uh, uh, sang about. They were spontaneously uh, composed, as I say, on the plantations. The first one goes something there. The, there are only four lines long. Uh, the first one goes, shall I go on to America or return to Japan? This is my dilemma here in Hawaii. Or um, a sudden downpour and the laundry got wet. The baby on my back is crying, and the rice just burned. It's a pretty poignant scene. Uh, when I left Yokohama, I cried as we sailed away. But now, I have children, and grandchildren too. So there's some songs that indicate how people have managed to survive through uh, this whole process, and uh, make some meaning, and some positive meaning out of this. Uh, or, if they think back to, how, how difficult life was uh, working there. Glorious Hawaii, Hawaii. I came and found hell on earth. The boss is the devil. His lunas, the overseers, his lunas are demons. <laughs> um, 
or the husband cuts the cane, the wife carries it away. Together, in good spirits, they make their way. Uh, so let me show the uh, DVD now so you can see what they actually sound like. Uh, and, and then we can maybe talk a little bit more, maybe bring the group back up uh, so we can hear more of these songs. As a recovering academic. <laughs> and so, so I tell people, if you catch me going on with, with, with what might look like a 50-minute lecture, uh, uh, please, uh, you know, adhere to my 12-step program to uh, talk me down, and, and so I don't, I don't do that anymore. So anyway, it's, it's actually kind of fun to talk at people again, but I, I would love to hear if people have questions or comments uh, about, about the, this project. Or, in the 1800s, how did the Japanese end up on Hawaii? Uh, they're responsible for uh, generating enormous amounts of wealth for, for uh, the owners and creating uh, some money but a lot of misery for people who are uh, brought in, into, into uh, plantation labor. For example, uh, we know about the Atlantic slave trade from Africa, uh, but we don't necessarily know that, in fact, most most uh, of the African slaves did not go to North America and work on cotton plantations. About 94% went to the Caribbean and Latin America to work on sugar plantations. So, so there's a lot of movement of, of labor there. Um, in, 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 in Hawaii, the first plantation was created in 1835 in, on Koloa, on, on the island of Kauai. And the first um, labor group was Native Hawaiians. But that group was being decimated, uh, reduced considerably in number, not so much by um, being killed, but by diseases that were brought by uh, Europeans and Americans, uh, diseases uh, for which the uh, Native Hawaiians had no resistance. And so that population declined from what we think is close to 400,000 people at the contact, at the point of contact in 1778. And it may be useful to also remember, 1778 when Captain Cook goes to Hawaii and quote unquote discovers the islands, that's two years after the Declaration of Independence by the uh, colonies uh, on the eastern seaboard of the United States. So Hawaii is very old and has very old um, relations to, to the United States. Um, and so the, uh, Americans and Western Europeans, mostly Americans who come as missionaries and businessmen after 1820, begin to create uh, entities like the sugar plantations in the, in the 1830s. The Civil, the civil War, um, which cuts off southern sugar to the north, uh, creates an opportunity for sugar plantations in Hawaii to make a lot of money. And so the Chinese are, are, are recruited as labor beginning in the 1850s. And other, other people are recruited as well, including Portuguese um, um, in, in the 1860s and 70s. And the Japanese become um, a target for recruitment because in 1882, the United States passes a, um, the Chinese Exclusion Act, which prohibits, and, and for the first time in our history, um, by, by, by name, names a group, uh, the Chinese, um, and prohibits them from entering the United States as immigrants and from becoming naturalized citizens. That impact was enormous. And so the plantation, labor, uh, plantation management had to recruit labor from elsewhere. Japan became one of the targets. So in the 1880s, um, the Japanese become uh, began entering uh, Hawaii in large numbers. Maybe 200,000 total uh, go to Hawaii. So that by 1900, uh, the Japanese are about 40% of the Hawaiian, uh, total Hawaiian population and over half of the uh, sugar plantation labor, labor force. So they become a very important part of the cultural mix of, of Hawaii. Um, and you have a very interesting mix of people, and if you've been there, you know, uh, and maybe someone has told you, 
that Hawaii is the only state in the Union uh, which, number one, had a monarchy and went through a period of, as a territory and then uh, became a state. And, and it has that history partly because uh, American businessmen um, colluded with the uh, Marines in, in uh, Hawaii, United States Marines at the time in 1893 to overthrow the last uh, ruling monarch, the Queen Liliokalani, in 1893. By 1898, Hawaii is annexed to the United States and um, becomes a territory of the, of the United States. The other thing about Hawaii is that it's, it has, it's the only state in the Union which has never had a white majority which helps explain why some of the cultural uh, racial dynamics are so unique uh, there. Um, I'm not sure how much time we have. We have a few minutes.